This morning, we are blessed to have with us a special guest. Mr. Shellam Klein is uh, a North Carolinian from Western North Carolina. He is a, a Christian country artist, Christian comedian. Um, he is also uh, someone the Lord has, has sent our way today. And he's going to share with us, and we will probably laugh a lot. We will probably cry a little. We're going to sing. We're going to hear his testimony. And uh, we're just grateful to have him today. You'll have an opportunity at the end of the service to, to contribute to his ministry if you'd like to. We also, uh, he'll tell you about some products he has if you'd like to take a look at those. But right now, we just want to ask Shelham to come and share with us what the Lord's laid on his heart. Sunshine saving for a rainy day. In every hairpin turn, I can hear my mama pray. I'm reeling in the one on the line. Not worry about the one that got away. Cause I ain't gonna get everything right. But I'm gonna make this a real good ride. Every tunnel still leads to a light. No, I ain't gonna get everything right, but I'm gonna make this a real good right. Thanking God for the best and worst of times. I'm living this glass high. Yeah, I'm living this glass high. I want you to look at somebody right beside of you, smile at him real big, and say, you're looking awful purdy this morning. You'll find me on the good side of every bad news way. It ain't no accident, that's how the potter made the clay. I always see a mud puddle. That's right. When others see a lay. I ain't gonna get everything right But I'm gonna make this a real good right Cause every tunnel still leads to a light but No, I ain't gonna get everything right But I'm gonna make this a real good right Thanking God for the best and worst of times I'm living this class high yeah, I'm living this glass time for all life. All right, now look at somebody on the other side of the church. Wave at them real big and say, I'm so glad you got to see me this morning. I ain't going to get everything right, but I'm going to make this a real good right. Because every tunnel still leads to a light. No, I ain't going to get everything right but I'm gonna make this a real good right thanking God for the best and worst of times I'm living this glass high yeah I'm living this glass high oh, 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 oh. you know that should be our prayer each and every day is Lord let us make today a glass half full type of day Dear God, standing next to a barren field, a broken heart needs time to heal. I've done my best, but this life just ain't fair. God, I don't understand. I pray, but I can't feel your pain. But in my deepest and darkest despair, I see you there In my little girl smile Every country mile On a back porch rocking chair And I see you there 
In a little white church with the pill and paint And the feeling I get when I say your name Someday soon I'll see the real thing But for now you left a little piece of heaven everywhere And I see you there Dear God done the best that I can and I look around I can't see your hand can you help me in my time of despair but I see you there in that little white church with the pill and paint and the feeling I get when I say your name someday soon I'll see the real thing but for now you left a little piece of heaven everywhere And I see you there when I sing amazing grace When I see you move in my everyday Someday soon I know I'll see your face But for now you left a little piece of heaven everywhere And I see you I see you there. Amen. Aren't you glad to know he's with us every step of the way? Amen. And we can see him move in our each and every day. Amen. How many of you believe it's all right to smile a little bit? I'm going to admit to you, I'm worried about a few of you this morning, all right? We're going to get you smiling, hopefully, this morning. How many of you have never seen Shellam Klein live in person before? If that's you, raise your hand. Raise them up high so everybody else can see the ones that are lying in church this morning. I'm standing right here, and I've already sung you two songs, so you can't say that anymore. Amen. Some of y'all get that here in just a little bit. There you go. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shellam Klein, originally from a small town of Troutman, North Carolina. Uh, so I am a North Carolina boy, but uh, grew up there in Troutman. Uh, got married back in September um, of this year. Well, last year, I should say. So I'm a newlywed about five, six months in. I don't do math very well. And praise the Lord, my wife's not here, so she won't see that. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, of course, uh, we got married back in September and uh, live in a little town called Hickory, North Carolina now. And I uh, travel all across the country in what they call Christian country music. What does that mean? means I get to wear my blue jeans and cowboy boots and sing about Jesus. Amen? It's enough to make a dried up Baptist want to shout right there, I'm telling you. But again, it is an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. And I hope that something I sing, something I say will be a blessing to you. I can tell you every song that you hear this morning and of course the message behind it is talking about real life. Because you know, how many of you are living a real life? Many times we as Christians, we forget that we're living a real life. And you know, God can use the good the bad, and the ugly. He can use every bit of it for his honor and his glory. And so I hope today, by the end of the service, you'll be encouraged by that thought to know that no matter what you're facing today, that God is still God, and he is still on the throne. Amen? This next song I want to share with you was a number one song for me uh, back in 2020, and also one song of the year for the world of Christian country music. And uh, it was a song that I wrote for my munchkin. I've got three little munchkins at the house now. I've got a six-year-old, a five-year-old, and a four-year-old, all girls. Y'all pray. That's all I can say, all right? But uh, my six-year-old asked me uh, in early 2020, she came up to me, she said, Daddy, and I said, yes, ma'am. She said, Daddy, she said, I want you to write me a song. And I said, honey, I've written you like 50. She said, but Daddy, I want a good one. When you write songs for a living, boy, that just makes you want to shout right there, don't it? And I told her, I said, okay, her name's Ella Brooke. And I said, Ella, I said, I want you to tell me, what do you want me to write about? And she wears pink glasses. And she took those glasses off and she handed them to me. And she said, Daddy, I want you to write me a song about my pink glasses. Well, three days later, we left and went up to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm a songwriter in Nashville and go to Nashville every few weeks and write. And I sat down and wrote this next song, like I said, that wound up being a number one song for us in 2020. And I hope that you enjoy it today. If you've got little munchkins, I like to call this the daddy-daughter song, all right? Because it might make you tear up a little bit. But I want to share this little tune with you that's just simply entitled Little Pink Glasses. 
Listen to the words of this. Can I tell you, even on the worst day, when my little munchkins run up and give me a big old hug, it seems like all the world's troubles just melt away at that moment, doesn't it? She believes in Santa Claus. Some princess turns to frogs. She thinks that her daddy's a superstar. She likes chicken nuggets, mac and cheese, piggybacks bouncing on my knee. She knows that I love her with all my heart. At three feet tall, she makes this grown man cry. So I'll just hold on to right now for the rest of my life. Because it's lightning bugs and princess dresses, cleaning up her own messes, stalling bedtime long as she came. Trying to save every hook and every laugh You bottle them up but they go so fast I hope she grows as slow as molasses Cause right now she's perfect In little pink glasses Tell me how true this verse really is. For long she'll be rolling her eyes, knowing it all, telling white lies, and she'll think that her daddy's old and lame. It'll be first talk, first day, and I'll be calling if she's one second late, and Lord help me when she walks across that stage. And five feet tall she'll still make Grown man cry, so I'll just hold on to right now for the rest of my life. Because it's lightning bugs and princess dresses, cleaning up her own messes, stalling bedtime long as she can. Trying to save every hug and every laugh, you bottle them up, but they go so fast. I hope she grows as slow as molasses Because right now she's perfect Little pain glasses She's grown up and I'm old and gray Hear my little girl say, Thank you, Daddy. For those light bugs and princess dresses, cleaning up all my messes, and stalling bedtime long as you could. You're trying to save every hug and every laugh. You bottled them up, but they went so fast. And know that I didn't grow slow. As my last sees, my life was great, and those years were perfect in my little pain. Last sees. Aren't you thankful for the little munchkins God's put in our life? Amen. Not only do I travel and sing in different churches, but I also do a lot of like auction houses and campgrounds and theaters and things like that as well. A lot of different places that God allows me to go. And I was singing at this campground down in Georgia one night and uh, finished up singing. And this guy come up to me and he said, man, I'm from Maryland. And I said, all right, awesome. And he looked at me, he said, can I just tell you, you're about as country as a pan of cornbread. And I smiled real big and I said, thank you. He said, that's not meant to be a compliment. I said, brother, I'm a Baptist and I love to eat cornbread. That is a compliment. <laughs> and he just looked at me and he said, I could just sit here and listen to you. He said, you talk weird. And I said, and you do too. <laughs> and he just looked at me and he said, I, I can't handle it anymore. And just turned around and walked off. And I was like, when? There you go. <laughs> but you know, I got to thinking about something. When I got back to the hotel that night, I got to thinking... 
We need a good old gospel song that talks about cornbread. <laughs> and I've not heard of a good old gospel song about cornbread. How many of y'all like to eat cornbread? I'm, praise the Lord. We're going to be friends. Amen. But we got back to the, the hotel that night, and I was, I was sitting there, and I was thinking, yeah, we need a good old gospel song. So I wrote one, because I knew there would be only one person in this world that was crazy enough to write one, and that, I was looking at him in the mirror, all right? So I'm going to share with you what I like to call cornbread gospel music here this morning. Is that all right? Can I do that? I want to share this little tune with you. It says, I'm country as a pan of cornbread. <laughs> Not educated, a country boy with a southern drawl. When I speak to anybody, I use words like ain't in y'all. I try to be kind to everyone, don't let things get under my skin. But this country boy became a prized possession when I got born again. I like taters. Beans and biscuits and a slab of liver mush. I like hunting, fishing, and racing. And I've slept in the bed of my truck in the hay field. In my overalls, I swear I asked my wife to marry me. Well, I'm as country as a pan of cornbread, but my daddy is the king of kings. I'm used to dealing with skeeters. I like to drive my truck through the mud. And when I see you on that old dirt road, I'll holler and throw my hand up. Down here I may have enough in. I'm just as poor as I can be. But my daddy owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He is the king of kings. And I like taters. Beans and biscuits and a slab of liver mush. I like hunting, fishing, and racing. And I've slept in the bed of my truck in the hay field. In my overalls is where I asked my wife to marry me. Well, I'm as country as a pan of cornbread, but my daddy is the king of kings. Your last name or your bank account, well, it doesn't mean a hill of beans. Just as long as you know Jesus, your daddy is the king. And I like taters, beans and biscuits, and a slab of liver mush. I like hunting, fishing, and racing. And I've slept in the bed of my truck in the hay field, in my overalls. I swear I asked my wife to marry me. Well, I'm as country as a pan of cornbread, but my daddy is the king of kings. Well, I'm as country as a pan of cornbread, but my daddy is the king of kings. How many of you know somebody that if they was to smile, the whole world would shut down right then? Anybody know somebody? Like, we got fingers pointing in the church house, brother, already. There you go. You know, I'm, a, I'm the type of person, I love to see people laugh. And I believe that we as Christians, we don't do that enough. Because, you know, like I said earlier, even on the worst day of our life, God is still God. And the good outweighs the bad every single day. And let's think about it this way. We've read the back of the book, and we know who wins this thing, you know. And we're on the winning side. So no matter what happens in our life, we have a reason to smile. But, you know, there's just some people in this world that if smiling, like, it's just not natural to them. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I, I love people that gripe and complain all the time. How many of y'all like that? I just love it. You know, it, it just blesses my heart, I'm telling you. And, but I believe, in all honesty, that God wants us to smile. And one of the main reasons, I'm going to come down here where I can see you guys. My contacts are doing something weird, and I can't see nothing. Amen. But I want to share with you one reason that I honestly believe that God wants us to smile. 
And that's because he made these little things called church signs. How many of y'all read church signs going down the road? There's some good ones out there, and then you got some, you're scratching your head saying, what in the world were they thinking? <laughs> so is it all right with you if I take, I know it's Sunday morning, but again, I believe we as Christians, we should be able to smile a little bit. And I've still got two of you I'm still working on right now, okay? <laughs> it is my goal. I, 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 brother, we ain't leaving till they smile this morning. I'm telling you, we'll be here till 3.30. Amen. <laughs> but <laughs> somebody's turning around. Some, I don't care who it is. You better start smiling now. I just heard that over there. There you go. <laughs> I heard that, brother. I heard that. He's like, why'd you call me out in the Lord's house? There you go. <laughs> I like y'all already. This is exciting. But I want to share with you, if you don't mind, for just a couple minutes, some good old church sign bloopers that I have found across this country. There was a young man by the name of Tony Green, sung with a gospel group called The Greens out of Boone, North Carolina. Tony and I were really good friends. He's gone on home to be with the Lord. And Tony would always text me different church signs that he saw, and I'd text him different ones as we were traveling and singing. And uh, so I'm going to share a few of these with you today. Like, don't let worry kill you. Let the church help. <laughs> I just heard the preacher say amen. <laughs> Don't worry, child. Moses was a basket case, too. <laughs> there was this one, I'll never forget this. I was in Alabama. I sang on a Saturday night in Alabama. And I had about a three-hour drive north to northern Alabama. They wanted me to cover the whole state in 24 hours, apparently. And as on my way up, uh, on the way up there, I passed this church. And, brother, I wanted so bad to cancel my Sunday morning just to be at this church because their church sign. Because this is what their church sign said. Sunday morning service. What is hell? Come early and hear our adult choir practice. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to be the music director there? So the first weekend of December, I was sitting there and setting, or setting my system up. I was singing at a church, and Tony sent me a text that said, Brother, you've got to pray. And it was a picture of their big old bus sitting in front of this Baptist church. It said, Sunday morning service, the Greens in concert. And I looked at it, and I was like, what in the world? Like, I don't understand. He's singing. Well, I, I'm not quite sure what he's trying to say here. And then the next picture came in of the church right across the street. And their church sign said, Sunday morning service, hanging of the greens. <laughs> I realized right then what he meant. But then there's my all-time favorite church sign blooper that comes from a little town in North Carolina. We won something. And this is what it said. Pinto bean and cornbread supper. Music will follow. Some of y'all will get that in just a little bit, all right? As I look back over this life, all the trouble and strife are so easy to be found. Still, I hope I never get so discouraged I forget how one day the Lord saved me. So my children just hold on for one day we're going home, don't you agree? That it sure is good to be saved. It sure is good to be saved. It sure is good to be saved. It's good to have a Savior who's with me every day. Well, it's good to know wherever I go, I can always shout and sing. Praise the Lord, for well, it sure is good to be saved. How many of you glad to know you're saved this morning? Amen. Now when it seems the bad times come, oh, it really is no fun when we wonder if God's around. But then I think a man of old, all those stories we've been told like the one Silas and Paul they were locked up in the jail but until my Lord prevailed they were singing 
Well, it sure is good to be saved. It sure is good to be saved. It sure is good to be saved. It's good to have a Savior who's with me every day. Well, it's good to know wherever I go, I can always shout and say, Praise the Lord. Well, it sure is good to be saved. It sure is good to be saved. It sure is good to be saved. It's good to have a Savior who's with me every day. Well, it's good to know wherever I go, I can always shout and say, Praise the Lord. Well, it sure is good to be saved. I'm glad I'm saved. Aren't you thankful for that? I mean. This next song I want to share with you guys um, comes from a little place that I like to call Walmart. How many of y'all like going to Walmart? I love going to Walmart because you just never know what you're going to find at the Walmart. And I'll never forget, I had moved into uh, the, the house that I'm living in now, a couple months obviously before my wife and I got married. I moved into this house, had everything going. I still had what I called my bachelor pad, all right? And I was sitting there at the house one day, and I was like, you know, I want, a, I want a grilled hot dog. And I realized I had the hot dogs, but I didn't have the hot dog buns. So I went over, to, uh, went down to Walmart, and I'm the type of person to where I love talking to random people. Did anybody else do that? I just love, we, <laughs> we got people that are like, yes, you, you. <laughs> I just love talking to people, and, and I tell people all the time, if we have a conversation, there's a 90% chance you're gonna wind up in a song somewhere, all right, it's that simple. And so I'm standing there and going to get the hot dog buns, and I could tell there was this young man that was standing there. You could just tell on his face he was not having a good day. And he didn't look like the typical Christian either. He had tattoos all over him. His ears were pierced from top to bottom, you know, just whole nine yards. Did not look like the typical Christian, all right? And I just looked at him, and I said, man, I really wish they'd make these things easier and only give me two or three options instead of 58. This is ridiculous. And he looked at me and he said, I know. And we started just having a great little conversation and started laughing. And all of a sudden, this sweet little lady, she came pushing her buggy up. And uh, she was just so, just so excited. She walked up to me in all 96 pounds of her makeup. And um, <laughs> she looked me right in the eye and she said, do you know who you are? <laughs> and I smiled at her. I said, yes, ma'am. Do, do you know who you are? Like, do I need to call somebody or what's... And she said, no, she said, you're Shellam Klein. I said, y yes, ma'am, that's me. She said, you go to my son's church every year. And she said, I can't believe people like you shop at Walmart. <laughs> well, where are we supposed to go, you know? I mean, seriously. And, and so we were standing there talking, and she said, do you mind if I take a picture? And I was like, no, that's fine. And, you know, most normal people bring out their cell phone, right? Well, she did, but... She went the step further, and she reached into what I thought was a briefcase. She called it a pocketbook, and pulled out a selfie stick, put that thing to the very, very, very end, put her cell phone on there, and it took us like 10 minutes doing just like this to get the right lighting for her in the middle of Walmart. <laughs> so needless to say, this sweet little lady started walking off, and this young man by this time was so confused, and he looked at me and was like, so are you like famous or something? And before I could say anything, this sweet, wonderful, godly woman turned around. She said, he sings for Jesus. You should have him sing you a song right now in the middle of Walmart. <laughs> and it was at that moment that things began to change. Because that young man looked at me. He said, wait, wait a minute. You're a Christian? And I said, yes, sir. He said, like, like a, a real one? I was like, well, we're not extinct yet, man. We're getting there, but we're not yet. And he was like, no. He said, I I'm sorry. He said, I just didn't know Christians smiled. Now, let's let that hit home just for a second. And you know what I said to him? I said, apparently, you got a story. Tell me about it. This young man had just moved to the area. and had been in two different churches in the six weeks he was there. 
First church had somebody follow him around like he was a criminal the whole time. The second one stopped him at the door and said, well, we, we televise our services and we don't allow your kind to come in because you might be on our TV. But feel free to sit in the parking lot and listen on our radio station. And that young man looked me right in the eye and he said, man, if that's a Christian, I don't want to be one. What do you say to that? You know, I began talking to him and I said, man, I understand. I said, I understand where you're coming from. And I invited him to a, a singing where I was going to be at the very next Sunday night. And he said, man, I ain't going to show up. He said, you actually smile. He said, if I showed up, they'll escort me out, and they won't like you before you even get started. I said, most people don't like me anyway, brother. It's all right. <laughs> but you know, he showed up that night, and that young man accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior that evening. Amen. But can I tell you, when I got home from Walmart that night, I got to thinking about that young man was judging Jesus by the way his kids was acting. And I wonder how many times God has given us the opportunity to share the love of Jesus with somebody, whether it's right in the middle of Walmart or not. But because we're too busy, because we've got something else going on, we just don't do it. I sat down and I wrote this next song and when I sent it over to my record label, they called me like 10 minutes later and they said, Shellam, are you sure you want to put this on your next album? They said, this is one of those songs that step on people's toes and you either going to like it or you're going to hate it. And I said, good, that's what we need. It's time to stop sugarcoating things and get to the real life situations and let people know that we are in a world that is desperately needing Jesus. And it's time that we as Christians stand up and be the Christians that God has called us to be instead of seat warmers at the local church house. So I'm going to share this tune with you. Again, I'm going to share that you're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. If you like it, say amen. If you hate it, it's the preacher's fault. <laughs> All right? But I'm going to share this thought with you. It just simply says, judging Jesus. Listen to the words of this song. Some folks don't go to church, and I don't blame them. Sometimes I don't want to go myself. Mom says I can't tell the difference between right and wrong and lazy, but she's just happy I'm no longer bound for hell. He calls us his children. And we fight like family We're all just forgiven sinners Who sometimes act like kings and queens But if you're judging Jesus By looking at his king We're only gonna let you down We're nothing like him He was the perfect sacrifice We're just here to tell the tale so I hope you won't be judging Jesus till you meet him for yourself. Just open up his word and he will meet you right there. Black and white and red Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth And every black mark against you Will be covered by the blood that he shed He chose to die for sinners Then to sit upon his throne He made us a home in heaven when he rode away that stone With your judging Jesus By looking at his king We're only gonna let you die We're nothing like him He was the perfect sacrifice We're just here to tell the tale 
So I hope you won't be judging Jesus till you meet him for yourself. I wonder how many times this week you've had the opportunity to share the love of Jesus. But because you were too busy, because they didn't look like you, and you didn't have time to deal with it, you turned and walked away. When they look at us, are they saying there's something different about them? Or they say, and that's a Christian, I don't want to be one. If you're judging Jesus by looking at his king, we're only gonna let you down. We're nothing like him. He was the perfect sacrifice. We're just here to tell the tale. So I hope you won't be judging Jesus till you meet him for your sin. No, I hope you won't be judging Jesus till you meet him for your next song I want to share with you is my current radio single. It's sitting at number nine on the national chart for this month. And uh, just found, actually, as I was driving in today, I was going through Waitsboro and uh, was listening to, to a radio station. And this song came on. And I was like, I know this guy. <laughs> Got excited. I was jamming out to it. Everybody looking at me like I'm weird, but y'all already figured out I am. See, you're one up on them. There you go. But I want to share this thought with you. The song is simply entitled This Day. Listen to the words of this song as I share this with you today. When I heard myself getting on my keys, I thought of my old man. So I called him up and we shared a laugh. He said, Son, now you understand. Boy, it goes so fast Don't let this moment pass Floors are getting scratched up Walls are getting marked up A ball's gonna wind up breaking a vase But floors can be sanded Walls can be painted And a vase can be replaced you can never get back this day. When I hung up the phone, I couldn't help but think how tired his voice had grown. The strongest man that I ever knew somehow God knows boy it goes so fast don't let this moment pass floors will get scratched up walls will get marked up a ball's gonna wind up breaking a vase but floors can be sanded walls can be painted Place can be replaced, but you can never get back this day. As I look around at this mess we're in, they're fast asleep, and I'm holding them, my little girl. scratched up, walls will get marked up, a ball's gonna wind up breaking a vase, but floors can be sanded, walls can be painted, and a vase can be replaced, but you can never get back this day. 
No, you can never get back this day. You know, that song became a reality to me. On Christmas Eve of 2019, we had just finished Christmas festivities, and I was sitting there at my grandmother's house, and when I stood up out of the chair, I hit the floor. As soon as I hit the floor, my mom and dad, they're in the medical field, and they started working with me, and it took about 10 minutes and they couldn't get me responsive, so they immediately called EMS. And one of the guys that knew my family real well and worked with my dad showed up there that night with the EMS unit. And mom said that they put all these monitor things on me, and he turned around and she said, This seven foot one guy, hell as a sheet, looked at her and he said, We got to go. He said, Shellum's having a heart attack, but where it is, it's in the back of the heart, known as the widow maker. He said, we got about 20 minutes, that's it. They loaded me up. We got about a mile down the road. Luckily, the hospital was only a couple miles from my grandmother's house. We got halfway to the hospital, and I woke up. As I'm laying there in the back of that EMS unit, all I see is a seven-foot-one man over top of me. And even though I may be country redneck, I ain't crazy. So I just laid there, and I got to the hospital, and after they started doing tests and had about 50,000 wires coming from everywhere, the doctor walked in. The first thing he said to me and my mom and dad that were there, he said, are y'all religious in any way? My dad explained to him I was in full-time ministry, and he looked down at me. He said, son, he said, I just got one explanation. Your God's not done with you. He said, that's all I can tell you. He said, because your heart attack that you were having stopped. About the time it was doing major damage. And he said, so it went long enough to give us information that we needed that your body wasn't making blood. He said, but it didn't affect you as bad as it could have been. So he sent me to this doctor, who sent me to that one, who sent me to that one. That one sent me back to this one. Y- y'all know how the circle goes. And every single doctor I went to, this is something I never understood. Every doctor I went to took blood. Now, if I ain't making it, why are you taking it? <laughs> you know, it's not like I can go to Walmart and pick it up, all right? But finally, I got to a doctor that knew my family and specialized in several different things with the blood and as cancer as a whole. She looked at me, and this was in March of 2020, right when COVID started, and I was in that room by myself, and she looked at me, and she said, Shalom, she said, I'm not sure how to tell you this. She said, but I think you may have leukemia. Folks, can I be honest with you? It was at that very moment of my life and I was done. I didn't have the guts to go out and tell my family that was in the parking lot. So she went out there to tell them. And I sat there in that room by myself. And I kid you not, this is what I did. I looked up to heaven. And I said, seriously? I said, God, I go out and I sing for you every weekend to, in all honesty, people who could care less if I show up or not. And I said, and this is the thanks I get for it. And I can remember sitting there and I said, I'll make you a deal, God. I'll put the microphone down. You take this away and we'll just call it even. God had a different plan. That next day, they brought me in for a bone marrow test. And can I tell you that when all that was over, they looked at me and told me, they said, well, it's not leukemia. But we don't know what it is. She said, but we're going to try something which is never a good thing. She said, this is what we're going to try. She said, I'm going to bring you in this Wednesday and next Wednesday. And she said, I'm going to give you some blood, some iron, and we're going to do just a little bit of chemo to try to shock your body to start making blood. 
She said, that's the only options we've got. It confused me. That was way above my pay grade. I don't even know what that meant. But I know when I showed up that first Wednesday, when I walked in that chemo room, there was a whole lot of patients in there. It was a whole lot worse off than I was. And so I tried every way I could to make them laugh. I tried to make them smile. Give them some encouragement as they were going through their treatment. That night when I got home, I was sick as a dog. And that next morning, I didn't want to get out of bed. And that following Wednesday, can I tell you, I wasn't laughing when I showed up to chemo room. So I'm sitting there, I put my earphones in as they began the treatment, and I blared my music as loud as I could. And all of a sudden, I looked up, and a sweet little lady, about 15 minutes into it, little lady on the side, she just kind of looked at me and waved. And I waved back. She said, you're Shellam Klein, aren't you? And brother, can I tell you how mad that made me? You know why that made me mad? Because I'm in my comfort zone when I'm up here and I'm sharing the good, or at least trying. But when I was at my weakest point in a chemo chair, I didn't want anyone to know I was even there because they saw me and I was weak. She looked at me and she said, Shellam, she said, my husband and I followed you as you were growing up. She reminded me of a concert that I'd done at South Idaho High School. I put on a big homecoming concert every year in Troutman. And she said there was about 500 people there that night. She said your band was with you, y'all were playing. And she said at the very end, you grabbed a stool and just sat down and your guitar player just started playing and you just sung Amazing Grace, just you and a guitar. She said, nine souls got saved that night. I said, yes, ma'am, I remember that well. She said, my husband and I talked about that. She said, because it was more than a concert. It was an actual worship service where God showed up. She said, Shella, my husband passed away about four months ago. She said, about a week to the day after he passed away, I found out I had cancer. She said, I know this is not the time or the place. She said, but do you think you could sing just one verse of amazing grace for me? Even though I did not want to and had no desire to, I started singing. And there was nine patients in that chemo room that day, and all nine of us started singing amazing grace to the top of our lungs. Tears were flowing. Doctors poking their heads in trying to figure out what's happening in the chemo room. We sat there for an hour. Sung amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Two days later on that Friday, I walked back into that doctor's office for them to take more blood. As I'm sitting there in the room, the doctor walks in, shuts the door and props up against the door and smiles real big and says, three for three. So what is that supposed to mean? She said, you're the third patient I've seen today that was in that revival service on Wednesday. <laughs> and I said, you heard about that? She said, yep, and I know you started it. Brother, I get blamed for everything, all right? She looked at me and she said, but Shalom, she said, I'm not going to look at you and tell you your numbers are good. She said, because they're not. She said, but what I am going to look at you and say is God must have shown up in that chemo room. She said, because you're the third person today I get to smile at and say, some way, somehow, your numbers are absolutely perfect. And she said, there's only one explanation. God showed up. Folks, can I tell you something? I had to get to my lowest point to realize that this whole thing is way bigger than myself. I, as an individual, I like sharing the good things. 
But it's the bad and the ugly. It's God's favorite time to move. How many of y'all are still breathing? Okay, about 90% of you. That's good. Good statistic. We'll take it. But you know, can I tell you this? If we're still breathing, we're still writing our story. On your tombstone, you've got the beginning date and the end date. But in all honesty, when you think about it, those aren't what matters. What matters is the dash in between. And right now, you're writing the dash. That's what you're writing right now. And every day we wake up, we get to write a brand new page in our story. Sometimes those days are filled with the good, which we like, right? Carolina fans are liking that. I'm a dookie myself. I'll have to, y'all pray for me, all right? I cried about two and a half hours last night. Stop laughing. That's not funny. Amen. But you know, can I say this? You like it when the good happens. But the bad and the ugly is what we want to hide. The bad and the ugly is what we don't want to talk about. And see, before, before all this happened, what brought this on was a lot of stress that was going on in my life. And I'm going to be honest with you, there were nights while I was battling through this, and even before all this happened with everything that was going on in my life, I would lay at bed at night and say, God, I don't get it. Can you please just tell me why I'm having to face this battle that I'm facing? Can I tell you that God showed me that this is a whole lot bigger than what I could have ever imagined. And that sometimes we have to go through the bad and the ugly because somebody else is going through the exact same thing that you're going through. And the only difference between them and you is that you have the hope of Jesus Christ. I'm singing in a little small town called Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. Y'all probably know where that is on the eastern part of the state. And I finished up a Sunday morning, just a few weeks after all this had happened. I was exhausted. I hadn't got back to my normal self yet, if there is such a thing with me. And all of a sudden, this sweet little lady walked up with a cell phone in her hand, and she said, Shalom, she said, will you take just a couple minutes to talk to my son? And I said, yes, ma'am. And I picked the phone up, and you could hear the anger in his voice. You could hear the frustration. You could hear just how miserable he was. And he had started explaining to me that his wife had walked out on him. Told him that he was worthless, took the kids and ran. And he made the statement that I made in my life and said, what's the use anymore? And I told him, I said, brother, I said, where are you at? He was a half mile from the church. And so he met me in the parking lot of the church that morning. And as I walked out there, I got to his truck about maybe 10 feet from his truck. And he reached over in the front seat and picked up a gun and put it right here. I froze because I had never had this experience take place. And he began to tell me just how bad everything was. And it was at that moment of my life that I realized this young man could have cared less how many number one songs I've had on a chart somewhere. This young man could have cared less what stages I've been able to sing on or whose phone number was in my cell phone. He needed to know that everything was going to be okay and he had a reason to keep going on. And I began to tell him my story. The bad and the ugly that I tried to hide that was parallel and was the exact same story as his. The only difference was there was different characters. But it was the exact same. And right there in the middle of that church, I poured out my heart to this young man, which I had never done before. 
he looked at me after I poured out my heart and he said, so why? He said, if you work for God, why does your God make you go through that? And for once, I figured out the answer. God gave me the answer right there in that parking lot at Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina. And I looked at him right in the face and I said, for you. He looked at me and he said, you don't even know me. How in the world did you go through all this for me? I said, because I was where you were at. He said, I had the gun in my hand thinking about it. And I said, but I can stand on this side and tell you. Even on the worst day of my life, God's still God. and He's got a plan. And I can tell you that if you keep marching on, you keep going. I said, it's not fun and it's not easy. I said, but in the end, you win. And that young man with tears in his eyes looked at me and said, you think your God would love me? And I said, brother, let me tell you, he can love me, he can love you. And that young man took the gun down from his head, handed me that gun out the window of his truck. I grabbed a hold of that door, I yanked that thing open, I grabbed him, I pulled him out of that thing. And right there in the middle of that small little church in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina, in their parking lot, about 1.30, yes, after God's office hours. Some of y'all will get that halfway home, amen. At 1.30 in the afternoon, that young man in the parking lot, I had the opportunity to lead that young man to Jesus Christ. All hope was gone an hour before. But God showed up. Even after the church doors were closed. See folks, I don't know what time it is, but I promise I'll have y'all out in a minute. I promise. You'll be out by 2.30. I promise. <laughs> Each and every one of us are writing a story. Whether we like it or not. And Each and every day, we write the good, the bad, and the ugly. But it's in the bad and the ugly that's God's favorite time to show up. Why? Because when he turns it around and makes it good, there's only one person that can get credit for it. And guess what? It's not you. It's not me. It's him. So maybe you're here today and you're questioning God, why in the world? Can I tell you this morning that there's always a purpose, there's always a plan. And God can use the good, the bad, and the ugly. And at the very end, when it's all said and done, can you imagine how exciting it's going to be when we get to heaven? I like to think of it as a big old buffet of chicken at the marriage supper of the Lamb. <laughs> think about that now. You go over and you grab your big old chicken leg. Take a bite out. There's grease running down your face, which is all right because there's no calories in heaven. Somebody say amen right there. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you hear, as you're eating that big old chicken leg, you hear a commotion over here, and you see little David. He's telling the story. Boys, y'all should have seen it. Every one of them is too scared to go up against Goliath. So you know what I did? I went over there and I picked up some stones. I had my slingshot in my pocket, right? So I walked up there and I came back. I just let it fly. Whopped him right in the noggin. Flopped him flatter in a pancake. Coolest thing ever. Y'all know how stories go. Come on now. And all of a sudden, during all this commotion, somebody comes up and taps you on the shoulder. And they look at you and they say, you don't know me. And it's because you took time to share your story. All of it. That's the reason why I'm here today. Thank you. Can I tell you, when that happens at that very moment, it'll be worth every tear you've ever cried in your life. It'll be worth every sleepless night you've ever had to know that you had a hand in leading somebody to Jesus. At that very moment. 
because you took time to share the good, bad, and the ugly. You took time to share real life. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Shalom, I'm not sure if I was to close my eyes in death right now. Shalom, I'm not sure if I was to leave this world right now that I'd make heaven my home as no one's looking around. If that's you this morning, I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. And if that's you this morning, will you just slip your hand up so I can pray for you? I'm just not sure if I was to leave this world right now that I'd make heaven my home. No one looking around. If that's you, will you just slip your hand up so I can pray for you? I'm just not sure. Maybe you're here this morning. And you say, Shalom, I'm the one fighting a battle. I'm going through the bad and the ugly of my life right now, and I'm trying to fake it till I can make it so no one has a clue. If that's you this morning, just say, Shalom, will you pray for me that I will have the strength to keep going when it gets tough? If that's you this morning, will you just slip your hand up? God sees those hands. Maybe you're here this morning, and you're saved, and you say, Shalom, I know of at least one person who don't know Jesus as their Savior. How many of you can say that this morning? All over the house, you know of at least one. And right now, at this very moment, you're seeing a face in your mind right now, aren't you? You see the face of that individual. When was the last time that you got serious with God and got on your knees and begged God to save that soul of the face that you see? Better yet, when was the last time you begged God to let you be the one to share Jesus with them? Lead them to the cross. This morning I'm going to sing one last song. And this is my invitation song to you. And it just simply says God can. Because folks when you're ready to throw up your hands and say God I can't do this anymore. He looks back down at you and says you're right you can't. But I can. I'll take it from here. As I sing this last song, this altar's open. Will you come this morning? Will you allow God to do something in your life today? As I sing this last song. There are times when I feel helpless Like I'm out here all alone A ship out on the ocean That can't find its way home I can't walk on water I can't part the sea I can't think of a single reason Why anyone would forgive me But God can God Tennessee into a highway Build a road for a soul that's lost Give life to a new day Come down from the cross Conquer death and hell for eternity God can even save a man like me Back when I thought I knew it all, I didn't need his saving grace. When I tried doing things my way, I fell right on my face. But he was always right beside me, even when I was alone. Like a beacon in a lighthouse to guide this lost ship home. God God, yes, God can turn this sea into a highway, build a road for a soul that's lost, 
give life to a new day. Come down from the cross, conquer death, hell for eternity. God can need save a man like me. One of the hardest things for a man to do is admit when he is wrong. Come like a child and lay his sin at the foot of the cross. And remember, God, God cares. God Turn this sea into a highway Build a road for a soul that's lost Give life to a new day And come down from the cross Conquer death and hell for eternity God can even save a man like me And save a man like me. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me to come and be with you this morning. I hope that something I've sung, something I've said has been a blessing to you and encouraged you a little bit this morning uh, to be the best version of yourself that you can be. A couple things real quickly, and then I'll turn it back over to you, brother. I do have some CDs and some T-shirts um, out in the, uh, the vestibule. Of course, uh, the T-shirt, one of the T-shirts has the chorus of that song, God Can On It, um, as well as we've got one that says, I was raised on biscuits, blue jeans, and the Bible. Um, and then, of course, both the albums out there, uh, one of them has 21 different tunes on it. It's kind of a collector's edition. Um, where it's got a lot of older songs that I have done as I was growing up, as well as some funny tunes as well, like... I left my teeth at home, and honey, I love you more than ice cream, okay? So uh, you can check out those, very interesting, and then of course we've got the album called This Day that's got songs like Judging Jesus, This Day, God Can, all those are on there. 100% of what you purchase on the table today, 100% of the proceeds are going to go towards feeding starving children, mine. So if you feel the Lord leading, you go ahead and purchase that, and, uh, and I guarantee you my kids would love you for that, for sure. Also, let me ask you this. How many of you have Facebook or Instagram? If you've got Facebook or Instagram, if you've got it on your phone, I want you to bring your phone out real quickly, all right, because I need your help on something. My record label asked me just a few weeks back, they said, Shellum, when, when you go sing, do people like you? And I said, well, I hope. They said, well, the way social media is looking, it looks like they tolerate you more than like you, all right? So as of right before service today, I needed 23 more followers to make my goal by midnight tonight, all right? So even if you didn't like me, it's the Christian thing to do, okay? <laughs> and I need you to go follow Shellem Klein Music. So it's S-H-E-L-L-E-M Klein Music. It's all three words mixed together. Shellum Klein Music, follow that. After you follow it, you're going to see these three little dots right beside the follower button. I want you to click those. It'll pop up some things. You'll see invite to follow. Click that, and then you can select, like, however many friends you have and send them an invite to go follow Shellum Klein Music. That way, they'll feel sorry for me and be my friend, all right? Because I need it to look like that I do have friends. That would be greatly appreciated. So if you don't mind, uh, definitely check those out on Facebook and Instagram. If you need help doing that, I will, of course, be at the table. And I'll be uh, more than happy to help you um, go ahead and follow that and show you how that does. And kind of keep up with everything. March 26th of this year, um, here in just a couple weeks, we are going to be releasing a brand new album. And uh, doing a big homecoming celebration in Troutman, North Carolina that night. So if you want a weekend getaway uh, to the western part of the state... Uh, we are doing a special event that is a free event. Um, we're real excited about that. And, of course, all, all that stuff will be posted on Facebook as well, so that way you can keep up with all that. Again, thank you so much for allowing me to come. Brother, I'll turn it over to you now.